Greetings everyone and welcome back to another installment in the Phone Archive, a series in which we look at strange, weird, obscure and unique phones from all around the globe for your entertainment. And in today's one, I want to show you all one of Nokia's most unique devices. I mean, they did make a lot of unique devices back in their heyday, going from this, to this, to this, like so, to a gaming console, to something that we'll talk about soon, and stainless steel. Beautiful. However, one particular device that really stood out is this thing here, the Nokia 7280. The Nokia 7280 was released in the third quarter of 2004 and was part of Nokia's fashion lineup, which also included the Nokia 7260, a standard candy bar phone, the Nokia 7270, which was a traditional flip phone much like the 6170 in terms of appearance, and then the Nokia 7280, which the form factor is Lipstick. This phone is more commonly known as a lipstick phone due to, well, the look of it. This fashion line was then continued in 2005 as part of their Le Amour collection. But I only have a display model of the 7380. I aim to get the real deal one day. If you could point me in the right direction, please let me know so I can do a follow-up to this video. But today I'll only focus on the 7280. The 7260 and 7270 are unique in their own right, but let's all admit that this is much more stranger out of the bunch. Also another phone in the L'Amour lineup is the 7370, which does that. It is a pretty nifty design, I'll give it that. Even the little included charm here is pretty unique as well. Accordingly, here in Australia, this phone retailed at $929. Yeah. Let that one sink in. Adjusted for inflation, that's about $1,373, which I can agree that is a lot of money for something that looks like a Mars bar, but I'll also display a rough currency conversion chart here so you can get an idea of how much this phone costs around the world. And currently you can get the phone for about $190 US from eBay, which isn't too bad. I couldn't find it on AliExpress or anything like that, so you'd have to look around to see if you can get one cheaper. But as you will see further on in this video, this phone is more of a novelty than being a practical phone. And I would safely assume the sales figure for this wouldn't be that good as most people would have seen this and wondered why there is no keypad and bought a 7260 or something. Once again, Nokia had this as their fashion line, so more of an item to go, hey, I've got an expensive phone that doesn't do terribly much. But it looks cool. It was shown in the video for the Pussycat Dolls song Beep. I'm gonna do my thing while you're playing with your See? It is famous. I mean, it's an iconic phone that maybe you folks have seen before, but maybe thought, that's not real or something. But no, this is in fact a real thing that was once sold in stores. Imagine a company now putting out an oddball thing like this. Things like that just don't happen anymore. This is when phones were just pure design and feature rich and not just slab. As for the main specifications of the Nokia 7280, it came in a fairly lightweight package coming in at 84 grams. It was 115 by 32 by 19 millimeters all around, made of plastic, 2G only, which means I can't test this as an actual phone, which is sad, but it is what it is. The screen is a roughly 1.7 inch, 208 by 104 pixels, TFT LCD with an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, which as you can see doubles as a mirror. There you go. You can see the reflection. You had 50 megabytes of internal storage, no expandable memory, the rear camera, which is hidden right in here is a VGA camera, so 0.3 megapixels, taking photos with a resolution of 640 by 480. But unfortunately, this doesn't have a video recorder, which is a bit of a shame. There's also built-in voice commands, the weird controls consisting of the Navi wheel, and no implementation of a traditional keypad, a 700 milliamp hour battery that is removable, but not in a traditional way. You had to take it to a service center to be replaced, but I'll show you it during the teardown. We also have an FM radio, Bluetooth, infrared, and it is, of course, running on the Series 40 OS. All right, well, you've been staring at the 7280 all this time, so I think it is finally time to jump into having a proper look at this and test the functionality and features of it to show this phone's wow factor. I mean, you would get people stare at you if you had this pointed to the side of your head. It would have been a sight to see. So staring at the front of the device, we've got our earpiece, the 1.7 inch screen, which doubles as a mirror when the screen is off. We've got the navigational wheel, which goes both ways, of course. You can't press the wheel anywhere in sense of a D-pad. You've only got the middle button to press down. So the way to navigate through this phone is essentially just like an iPod scroll wheel just going like so. You've got the two option keys just there, as well as your call button and call end slash power button. We've got a little Nokia tag there as well, which does give this very unique device a bit of personality, I guess. I will admit that I do like the design of this a lot. The black with the white lines going around it just kind of looks really cool. We have the loudspeaker, infrared port, the SIM card tray, which works exactly like a modern day one. You pop it out. And there's your mini SIM. On the back, we don't have too much, but we have 
the hidden camera. I mean, this little mechanism kind of makes it look like a spy device of some sorts, with that camera being hidden, because you can just walk around with this. People probably had no idea what this is. Pop that open, take a few snaps, and yeah, that may have been used for some dodgy stuff. That's why on the revised 7380, they included it just on the back, so it's quite obvious. Also, hiding it supposedly makes it more luxurious. Just agree with it. On the top, we do have this rubber grip here to slide it open like so and push it back. Then on the side, we have this area here, which actually lights up. I will show you this later on during the video. On the other side, we don't have terribly much. We've got a hole for a microphone, a 2.5 mil headphone jack, and the standard Nokia charging port. But that's pretty much the outside of the 7280. It honestly looks more of an MP3 player than anything, but this is actually a phone. So I guess we're gonna go ahead and power this on. And I'll start showing you some of the features that this thing has. So watch the screen, go some a mirror, to screen. Just take a nice peek on that. And there we go. We've booted up. So if you were to slide this open, camera doesn't open up automatically, but otherwise we'll leave it closed for now. The navigation wheel, which can't do nothing with at the moment. And just have a look at the display. For a tiny 1.7 inch display, it doesn't look too bad. And we've also got a screensaver. So I'll just press that, there we go. It doesn't look too bad. It's got a couple of scratches on there, but it's just weird to have a Series 40 device that has a screen like this. Not like the traditional ones, which were something like that. The Series 40 UI has been changed to work with the design of this. And also if you were curious, you can't use it like so. You have to use it like this. Pressing the menu key, we do have messages, contacts, settings, gallery, media, organizer, web, number entry, and that is pretty much it. There's not a lot on this. The navigation wheel is a little bit sensitive, but for the most part, it is fairly usable for what it is. Now, I guess you're wondering, how exactly do I call someone on this? If you had a bunch of numbers already stored, you can just press the call button, select it, off you go. But if you have a brand new device, you don't have your contacts on your SIM card, so you have to go to number entry, which is where you have to tediously input each number at a time using the navigation wheel and the middle button. So let's Let's say I wanted to type in 0111899881199917253. It is a little bit tedious but there is no other way to do it. The phone does come with voice commands, so you can yell at the phone and it will do certain stuff, which I'll demonstrate, but that's how you enter a number. I mean, if it's only just 10 numbers you've got to input, it's not too bad, but still you're holding the phone like this. I mean, you could just use this with one hand and you go like so if you wanted to, but it sort of makes sense to hold it with two hands and use it. But every other phone had a traditional keyboard, which you could just type what you needed to type easy done. With this, as I said in the intro, it's meant as more of a fashion statement than a phone. Because I don't imagine just a regular person walking into a shop back in 2004 going, I want that phone, getting this, and using this as their main daily driver. You had to have a bit of money and a bit of a fashion sense to want to go for something like this. So let's just say you wanted to text one of your friends to tell them that you're at the restaurant waiting for them or something like that. Here's where things get pretty interesting because you thought it was tedious to enter in a number beforehand. Try entering a message. So you would be going, hello. And of course you've got no way to press space. So you have to come all the way back to the start, which I've made a mistake. So I have to press clear, then press space, and then go all the way to here. And if you wanted to do symbols or anything like that, you've got to scroll all the way to find the different options, but just go there and scroll all the way. This is pretty painful. <laughs> it is pretty painful. And once you've done that, and maybe finish it off with a full stop just because you're serious or something, you'd end up with that. And you've only got this little line to scroll through the characters to choose whatever you want and that's it. To be fairly honest though, in 2004, text messages were pretty much just a couple of words and that's pretty much it. The phone also makes an audible noise when you're scrolling through the characters, as well as the navigation wheel making a pretty satisfying click. 
Now to help you without having to type out something that took as long as that did, you do have templates that have just very basic messages. So if someone does message you, you can just enter one of these in. And if you need to add anything else to it, you can like see you in and then enter in 10 minutes and then send that. But still, it's just extremely weird looking at this and knowing that's the only way to enter text on a phone that would have cost you $929. But I've got to applaud Nokia's design. They weren't afraid to step out of the boundaries, that's for sure. So in contacts, you'd have all your contacts in here, which you can add a new one, delete, copy, and all that sort of stuff. Call register, which would just be looking at all your calls, call duration, GPRS stuff, dialed numbers. However, in call register, you are only limited to 10 dialed numbers, 10 received numbers, and 10 missed calls. So after every phone call, you'd pretty much have to add them as a contact, so then you wouldn't have to go using the navigation wheel to dial in a number and call it. Shortcuts is what it's all about. In settings, we have profiles, which of course, we're gonna play the ringtones that came with this device. Pretty funky. If you want to use it as a desk phone, there you go. I wonder where they recorded that. Sound from nostalgia. No.
apart from the light that's built into here, you've also got the keypad light, which does do that. Well, when I say keypad light, you know what I mean. There it is.
And that's it. That was 45 ringtones that you get with this. And Nokia always had different formats as well. They had AAC, NRT, MIDI, and each one sounded different in terms of quality. And some you've probably recognized, but I will say the speaker quality is fairly good for this. But then again, majority of the Nokia phones back then had pretty good loudspeakers anyways. And also while playing all those ringtones, the vibration motor was just going along with them all, which is pretty nifty. Now in themes, we do have bamboo, contrast, harmony, jazzy, and retro. So bamboo has a screensaver, a separate wallpaper. It assigns the Nokia tune as the ringtone. Contrast has Lime Tree as a ringtone. Threads 3 as the screensaver, which looks a little something like that. And the wallpaper is Blossom. Harmony has Daydream as a ringtone. Pearls as the screensaver, which looks kind of interesting. Jazzy has Regroove as a ringtone. Circles as the screensaver. Ooh, it's kind of nice. And the wallpaper is Concert. Retro has Sky High as the ringtone. Circle as the screensaver. Ooh, yep. Nifty once again. And Leaves 2 as the wallpaper. And you could also download themes from Nokia.com if you had a data connection. Too bad we don't have 2G here, as would have loved to have tested that, as well as actually go on the web with this. Tone settings is where you can change or your ringtone settings, of course. Light settings is just on, which I've already shown. Display settings, we've got wallpaper, which we can select a wallpaper in graphics. So I'll show you all of these. So you've got blossom, cake, which is actually animated. There you go. You've got cinema. Yep, that's fair. Coffee. See, they've all got the lines integrated into them. Gives it a little bit more flavor. Concert, leaves, leaves two, lines, love, lunch. All right, pearls, which we've seen earlier. Shopping. Yep, because that's what shopping looks like, I suppose. And back to Blossom. Color schemes, you can choose red, blue, black, brown, gray, yellow, orange, pink. Of course I've selected red because the phone is black, red, and white, so it only makes sense. Operator logo, screensaver, and that's pretty much it within display settings. Time and date settings, pretty self-explanatory here. Personal shortcuts, so you can have voice commands for profiles, voice mailbox, radio, infrared, voice recorder, call register, audible alerts, and back to profiles. So let's just say, a voice recorder which says record so press start then speak after tone open that'll do all right and now to use your voice commands you just hold the lower left key profiles there we go and then we've got open there we go it works. And within each of these menus, you can assign different voice commands, whatever you want to say, and then open it up on the main screen. And that's how that works. Pretty handy shortcuts. It makes sense to implement them on something like this. Connectivity, we have Bluetooth, infrared, and GPRS, and that is it. Call settings, which doesn't have too much in here. Not really much to say here. Phone settings, language settings, memory status. What have we got on here? So we've got 44.8 meg free and 7.6 meg used. Automatic key guard, which is on. Security key guard, which is off. Still info display on. Welcome note, if we wanted to type in something while it boots up. Operator selection, confirm SIM actions, help text activation, startup tone, and that's about it in there. Enhancement settings, charger, default profile. Guess we just leave that. Configuration settings, default config, personal config. Guess we just leave that as well. Security settings, pin codes, all that good stuff. Restore factory settings if we want to restore factory settings. And that is all that is in settings. I know most of that was taken up by ringtones, but I can't look at a Nokia device without having to go through all the ringtones, just for the whole nostalgia. Now in gallery, we have the images that I've taken with this. I also have a Cacodemon gif from Doom. And he looks a little something like that. I preloaded this on here when I first got this phone back in 2007 or 2008, maybe. I was volunteering in an op shop and this came in. They had no idea what it was and I got it from them. They didn't want anything for it. They just said for me to take it. So I did. And now it's a very rare phone. So I'm glad that they allowed me to take it. But I've taken a whole bunch of photos on here already with this camera. The 0.3 megapixels of EGA camera. And for 2004, it's not too bad. Put a 2022 welcome device up against this. I'm pretty sure this this will win. There we go, and you can zoom in to see it all there, like so, and then you can change the direction to go like that, and like so. 
It's pretty weird having to do this. They've had to compromise the user interface ever so slightly to kind of make it usable. But we'll get to camera soon. Video clips, I don't have anything on here. I did put the Costa Rica video on here and made the resolution the exact same size as the screen, 208 by 104, but it just didn't really work out. So I thought I'll just leave it. I'm pretty sure you will get the idea of the display quality of this anyways, considering the size and the resolution anyways. Themes we've been through, graphics is pretty much all the wallpapers and screensavers. All that good stuff there. Tones is all your ringtones, recordings, images. But there's one thing in ringtones that I have not shown yet. And this isn't a smalls review without BFG Division. Speaker test. Now this is on the maximum volume and you can't skip to a certain part. You just have to let it play. Oh shit. I accidentally pressed the Navi key. Well, have to do that again. I believe we got to 104.3 in that. The speaker is definitely nice and loud on this. I mean, for 929 bucks in 2004, you could have used this as a media player and it would have been quite sufficient. A quite expensive media player at that. All right, now moving on, we've got media up next, which has the camera. So I'll open up camera and it says camera on standby, open lens cover. So that's how you do that. And there you go. And if you go to options, you've got change mode, which I honestly thought there would have been a video recorder, but there's not. It's just standard photo, portrait photo, and night mode. And you've got zoom, which of course you can zoom in like so. I'd say that's two times and that would be four times, I think. Self timer, open gallery, settings, image quality's high, camera sounds off, default title. That is about it. So I'll splice the photos that I did take with the Nokia 7280 in and uh, enjoy what you're about to see because for 2004, it's not that bad at all. You probably would have all expected to see potato quality images, but they're actually reasonable. And as you seen when I zoomed into one of the photos earlier, the quality is not that bad at all for 2004. I mean, grab any Nokia device from 2004, 2005, and it will beat any welcome phone in terms of camera quality anyways. But I'm still trying to figure out the logistics of the phone. Even though it's a fashion phone, it doesn't have that many features. And what features it does have, it does do fairly well. I mean, apart from the whole keyboard input and stuff, the design's cool. It does make for a cool media player. It's sad that there's no video recorder. It's just more of a novelty than practicality pretty much. I guess this was more of a status symbol. If you had this, it meant you had money. But anyways, moving on, we've got the media player, which does open all your photos and graphics and tones and all that sort of stuff that we've been through. Radio, connected enhancement. Let me do that. So let's just try this and see if this does work. Okay, radio's on. All right, cool. Let's see what's on Australian radio on a Wednesday night at 11.21 p.m. I have no idea what that song was. And of course, we've got voice recorder, which if we record something, it's going to sound a little something like this. Which if we record something, it's going to sound a little something like this. 
So that gives you an idea of the microphone quality. In organizer, we've got an alarm clock, which will do exactly what it says. It's an alarm clock. Calendar, this is 2022, and that's what a calendar looks like on here. You just scroll through your dates, select a date, and you can put whatever you want in there. To-do list, pretty self-explanatory. Look up Samsung F480. That was in 2009. Well, I obviously wrote that. Notes, no notes. Synchronization, service sync, PC sync settings. So you can connect this to a PC. Finally, we've got web. So if we go to home, check home page address pops up. So if we go to last web address, not available. Download links, tone downloads, Nokia.com, connection not available. I wish I could have showed what web would have looked like on this. It would have been very strange to browse the web on something that looks like this. And finally, we're back to number entry. One thing I forgot to also show is there's one shortcut on the main screen, which you press that. It shows camera, number entry, volume, synchronization, radio, general, silent, infrared, Bluetooth menu, alarm clock, to-do list, pretty much everything here you would need. So if you didn't want to set voice commands, you could just press that and off you go. That is pretty much all of the stuff the Nokia 7280 has to offer. And apart from holding this up to your head, a little something like this, you definitely get a couple of looks for sure with something like that pointed up to your head in 2004. What can I say about this phone? It's unique, it's obscure, it's iconic as the Nokia lipstick phone. The 7380 on the other hand doesn't have that much of a reputation as this. It was just kind of like the follow-up that just existed sort of thing. It's just Nokia in 2004 made their fashion line with the other ones and decided to make something fairly unique. You know, a form factor that appeals to everyone. If you wanted a flip phone, you could have a flip phone. If you wanted a candy bar, you could have a candy bar. If you wanted to have a literal candy bar, you could have a literal candy bar. But for the price of the phone back then, it's just, it wasn't worth it. Being the most expensive model out of the three, you are very limited in what you can do. At least with these, you got the traditional games, you could record video, you did have the pop port as well to connect to PC, even though you did have limited internal storage, you could just do a lot more with these and if you had these three models in a shop what do you think people are going to go for people are going to go for the standard nokia form factors not this weirdo thing here i'm not too sure of the sales figures for this but i don't think it did too well to be fairly honest if anyone does have an exact number on how many they did sell or roughly how many units nokia did sell then please let me know nowadays as i said it's iconic it's cool it's nifty to have in the collection that's for sure but back then i don't see just your normal regular person going yep i'm going to use this as my everyday phone this was just more of a fashion statement, more of a thing to just whip out of your pocket or purse or whatever. And of course, if you wanted to use this as a mirror, you'd let the screen fade out. And then you hold your 1.7 inch screen up to your face and go, yeah. Um, I'm looking pretty good, I think. I just really miss the old school Nokia designs. They just weren't afraid to make something outlandish just for the whole sake of it. As I said, now we've just got slab after slab and a folding slab. Nothing unique anymore, which I really, really do miss. Walking into a phone shop when I was a kid and seeing all these different models of phones that had different flips and slides and twists and things was just so exciting. And now it's just slab, 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 slab folding slab a different slab that looks slightly different to the other slab you see and that's it man will we ever see something like this ever again no so let's just appreciate what nokia was doing for the phone industry back then with their weird designs and concepts and remember the good times with nokia unlike nowadays where nokia has just sort of fell off the face of the earth pretty much but anyways everyone that's pretty much my conclusion and review of this nokia 7280 i really like this as a collection piece but if you had one of these back in 2004-2005 and use this as a daily driver, please let me know down in the comments below because I'd love to hear your experience of how you would have used this if you used it with one hand or if you used it with two hands and if you used it as a media player or what did you use it for back in 2004? It'd be just very interesting to hear but I have a feeling that anyone who watches this video is likely to say, nope, haven't used this or I have never seen this device before or I've seen this device but I've never seen it demonstrated so we'll see. Let me know down in the comments what you think. I'm going to do one final thing that I hope not to regret. I want to tear this down and show you the innards of this. So I'll power it off. We'll get started on the uh, dissection of the lipstick phone. 
Now, in order to take this apart correctly, I'm going to follow an actual Nokia service guide to do this because I don't want to make the wrong mistake and kill this. So we'll follow this guide very closely. And if you want to laugh, have a look at the actual Nokia service videos that they intended for service centers back in the day. Some of them use this really, really robotic voice. And it's just kind of funny to go back to and watch. And they also call every single part of the phone something, as well as the tools being called all sorts of different names. They're really interesting. If you have time, please check them out. Just type in. Nokia 7280 disassembly or Nokia N95 disassembly and there'll be a confidential video that'll pop up and you can go ahead and watch it. I was deciding if I even wanted to do a teardown but seeing the 7280 disassembly from Nokia themselves isn't really the best quality so I figured in 1080p I'd show you the innards. So let's go ahead and do what we got to do. There we go. So that's what that looks like. This is interesting for the first time since 2004 when this thing was manufactured, it's finally going to be able to get a clean. There we go. It's a little dusty. Just give that a bit of a clean up there. We've also got the details for the phone there. Nokia 7280 and the QR code, the IMEI and all that good stuff. There we go. Look at that. Just clean that up a little bit. There we go. Factory, as Derek would say. All right, so that just pops out like so. Fairly interesting that it doesn't look like a mirror there, but when it's all back together, it looks like a mirror. We also got the key guard, just like so. Now we can finally take a look at the battery. This is it right here. This cute little thing. 700 milliamp hours and it's a BL8N battery. Oh, is there any damage going on just there? Hope not. You can buy replacement ones off AliExpress, I believe. That is what the navigational wheel looks like. If I spin that around like so, you can see it moving around inside of it. There we go. And we just pop the display ribbon like so. So that is the display there. We do have the earpiece tucked in there, the coin style vibration motor, as well as the headphone jack and charger port. And now we've got the guts. And then releasing that out of there, the 7280 motherboard. If you want to take a look at that right there. So we've got the main chips just in there, the SIM tray, all the contacts for the microphone and stuff. And then flipping it over, we do have the IMEI, the type made in Korea. And there's the camera there. Now 0.3 megapixel fella, more chips on the back there, covered with shielding. I'm not going to take them off for obvious reasons. And we do have some more codes just on the motherboard, but that's a fairly interesting one, isn't it? And also it's a completely screwless design. Design, which you may think there may have been two or three screws holding this together, but nope, it's just all clips and stuff. So I only had to use this and a flathead screwdriver just to undo some of the clips and that's it. You're into it. You've taken it apart. I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult, but there you go. It wasn't. But at least finally, I've got to see the battery after all these years of owning this device. It's cute. <laughs> I'll say that. It is cute. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put this back together and then we'll finish off this retrospective of having a look at this very, very weird, unique, obscure your Nokia device. That's it. I did it. Sweet. It still works. Job well done. Anyways, everyone, that's everything that I wanted to do in this video. I've talked about the history, we've had a look through the features and tested this out, and we've torn it down, so it's safe to say that I think that I've covered everything that I need to about this. I hope you enjoyed this latest installment in the phone archive, which I haven't done one in a while, which the last installment I did was the Nokia N91 retrospective, which you can watch up here. I'll card it, should pop up, and you can see that if you want to. It's basically just rambling and all that good stuff. The stuff that we do in the phone archive is just rambling, 
chill, having a look at some really obscure and unique devices, and providing a retrospective history on them. Well, as much history as I could find for the Nokia 7280 anyways. And if you made it to the end of the video, thank you very much for that. I hope you did enjoy watching throughout this whole entire thing. If you needed to use the timestamps to skip through the video, if you didn't want to see the ringtones, you just want to see the teardown or something like that, that's absolutely fine. That's why they're there. So there's no problems with that whatsoever. But I really hope you did enjoy having a look at this obscure Nokia device with me. And if you want me to have a look at more obscure Nokia devices, like some of the ones that I did show in the intro, please feel free to let me know. And I'm happy to do more installments in the future. I'll put it on the big to-do list that I have. And also if there was anything I missed or if you have any questions about this, please let me know down in the comments below and I'm happy to do my best to answer them. But anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And as always, take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video, which I got a really strange one that I've got to show you all. It's part of the phone archive. We're going to be looking at another obscure phone, except it's a clone this time around. But until that video comes out, take care, and I'll see you then. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.